Hello, welcome to day three of reading Matthew for Lent. I am Pastor Rick Williams at Zion Lutheran Church, and we are looking at chapter three of the Gospel of Matthew today. Um, yesterday we did chapter two. We heard about the, the wise men coming. We heard about uh, Herod wanting to find Jesus. We heard about Joseph and Mary and Jesus fleeing to Egypt. Um, many uh, people speculate that actually the gold that the wise men gave for a gift was probably used to, uh, to fund that trip to Egypt for uh, Jesus and Mary and Joseph. Um, we saw Herod kill all of the uh, children two years old and less in the Bethlehem region. And then after Herod's death, we saw Joseph, Mary, and uh, the baby return. Uh, they still weren't comfortable with Herod's son being in charge, so they went up to Nazareth. And we see that was so that we could uh, have scripture fulfilled in that they would say that Jesus was a Nazarene. So that's what happened yesterday. Today, in chapter 3, we're going to see uh, John the Baptist preparing the way. So let's, uh, without any further ado, we'll dive right in. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore a garment of camel hair and leather, belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. When Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to the baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized immediately, he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Well, it wasn't too long ago we heard those same words, was it? Uh, was it last Sunday? Transfiguration? I lost track. And I don't have my calendar here. Yeah, transfiguration. Once again, the voice from heaven comes down. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And I think it was uh, Mark that added the phrase, listen to him. So anyway, so now Jesus is officially entering his ministry. John has ushered him in. Um, one of the things I found of interest is that Matthew uses the term um, kingdom of heaven 32 times in Matthew. And, uh, you know, the kingdom of heaven is, is basically, it's a synonym for the kingdom of God. And actually, kingdom, in this case, might 
be better translated as rain because we're not talking about a geographical location. Usually when you think of a kingdom, it's a certain spot in the ground, but we are not talking about just one location. We are talking about the reign of God and God's act of ruling. And God's rule was near because John knew that Jesus was coming. You know, John and Jesus were related. Um, John's mother, Elizabeth, was uh, a relative of Mary. You remember when Mary went to see Elizabeth when she was pregnant with John, how the, uh, the, that John in her womb jumped for joy when Mary came into the room. So they, uh, they are relatives. Um, you know, and John, he, he, uh, he would be kind of what we would probably call today a, a, a naturalist. I believe the term was uh, a Sian was what he was. Uh, they were, were very devout. They were very, um, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, naturalists, I guess. That's why he's wearing camel hair. And a leather belt and that's why he's eating locusts and wild honey he's surviving off the land uh, they were very devout in their practice of studying scripture and in this case John has been directed and led by the Lord to introduce the coming of Jesus and and that's what he did here like I say when Jesus comes John kind of going I no I don't I sh I can't baptize you you should be baptizing me and Jesus says no we have to go through the motion you know we have to do this so John agrees and baptizes him and that's when the holy spirit comes and rests upon Jesus and we hear God speaking so some people have asked me and said well did did Jesus not have the holy spirit before his baptism uh no I can assure you Jesus had the Holy Spirit uh, at before he was baptized. Uh, first and foremost, uh, who conceived him? The Holy Spirit. This was just a visual representation to show that the Spirit was resting upon him. And it was also an affirmation from God as to who Jesus was. So, um, I hope that uh, is clear. I hope I didn't raise any... Uh, questions but if I did you can always ask me I love questions I don't get too many but hey feel free to ask me anything and I will do my best to find you the answer um, tomorrow we will continue with um, chapter 4 which will be let's see wait what's today today's Saturday no there won't be one tomorrow because tomorrow's Sunday so Monday we'll be doing chapter 4 the temptation of Jesus I forgot we're skipping a day in there so yeah so today being Saturday tomorrow uh, join us for worship you can watch us online we're live at 9 o'clock or you can watch it on YouTube <coughs> excuse me YouTube Facebook the church app or the church website uh, the website usually takes about an hour or two to get up uh, the app, you can actually watch live from the app. And uh, YouTube is usually up about 20 minutes after the service is over. So uh, watch any of those places. Um, like I say, 9 o'clock if you want to do it live. Uh, anytime after that, you can watch it at your leisure. So uh, just an update. Um, I am feeling quite a bit better today. I came into the office for a while and still not quite a hundred percent following that second COVID vaccine, but we're getting pretty close. So uh, it's working, or at least my body's working at fighting that thing off and hopefully building all those wonderful little antibodies that'll keep me safe in the future. So uh, I guess that's about it. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, if you have any questions, thoughts, comments, let me know um yeah so i i, I never quite know how to close so i always kind of ramble a little bit but i'm going to tell you what i try to tell you all the time be happy be healthy be kind be faithful love your neighbor and as i always like to remind you be ever watchful for the return of our lord I hope you have a really wonderful day. I hope to see you all soon. 
live in person face to face soon uh, hopefully we can get back to some kind of normalcy in the not too far distant future so again have a good day uh, be kind and God bless.